What's up guys? It's Friday and so you know what time it is. It's time for another episode of Data is More Important Than Your Feelings. Get the shirt, link in the description. It's time for What the Fitness, let's get them. We had the return of Dave Asprey on the show. So Mark Hyman was feeling left out and we would not want to do that to our dear friend Mark because it's been at least two weeks since he's been on the show. So we're gonna have to put him back on the show. Every pretty much age related disease. In fact, aging itself is often related to sugar issues and to lack of insulin sensitivity, which is what happens when you make you know a diet that is full of starch and sugar, you get these wild spikes in sugar, then that causes a spike in insulin and then sugar crashes you need more and more insulin just to keep the sugar balance. And ultimately that causes a whole cascade of problems that uh, we now know as the fundamental drivers of aging. Yes, and- No, 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 no. He did something which we call a bait and switch. He talked about how sugar is the cause of aging and then said that basically better insulin sensitivity or worse insulin sensitivity is related to aging. Yes, improved insulin sensitivity is associated with better longevity. That is not the same thing as sugar causes every disease or sugar is gonna cause you to die early. When we look at the randomized human control trials where calories are equated and they equate for sugar, even a trial where they fed over 100 grams of sugar a day versus participants getting 10 grams of sugar a day, they saw no difference in weight loss, they saw no difference in pretty much any marker of insulin sensitivity, blood lipids, all those sorts of things. The people on the low sugar diet had a little bit lower LDL cholesterol, a little bit, but that was most likely due to them eating more fiber. Lane, how could that be? He's right, when you eat sugar, it causes an insulin spike. Well, this is another example of people not understanding the difference between an acute short-term response that is a healthy part of your metabolism versus a long-term dysregulation in signaling, okay? So when you eat carbohydrate, your body produces insulin, your pancreas specifically. Insulin is responsible for lowering your blood sugar because if you have long-term elevations in blood glucose, it is bad for you. Short-term changes in glucose don't really mean anything for long-term changes. In fact, there was a study that showed basically that short-term changes in insulin response do not predict long-term insulin sensitivity. Furthermore, in studies where they equate calories and have different levels of postprandial insulin, they do not show differences in pretty much any metabolic health marker. In fact, there was a recent study in the UK where they switched people to a higher carbohydrate lower fat diet from what they were currently eating, but the higher carbohydrates were made up with a little bit more fiber, fruits and vegetables. They still did eat some starch, of course, but they had higher acute insulin levels, but they actually improved their long-term insulin sensitivity because they lost weight. I'm not saying a low carb diet is a bad idea. If a low carb diet helps you lose weight, it can help improve your insulin sensitivity. If a high carb diet helps you lose weight, it can improve your insulin sensitivity. If an intermittent fasting diet helps you lose weight, it can improve your insulin sensitivity and anything in between. Let me give you guys an example of why we should not worry about these acute measurements. Because all these low carb people who make a big deal out of carbohydrates spiking your blood sugar and your insulin, they were really quiet about how saturated fat reduces flow mediated dilation compared to meals with carbohydrates in them. Because flow mediated dilation is a short term measure and doesn't necessarily predict long term cardiometabolic health. This is what's called being logically consistent. If you're saying that short term rises and falls in blood glucose and insulin are super important for long term insulin sensitivity, then you also have to say that saturated fat is absolutely bad for heart health. You would be hard pressed to find a low carb person who would admit that. Saturated fat may have some downsides for cardiometabolic health, especially if it's a high amount of saturated fat because it can raise LDL cholesterol, which is an independent risk factor for heart disease. But that's another story, that's another can of worms. We'll open that can of worms later. Let me give you guys another example. What if I told you I was gonna have you do something or give you something that would acutely raise your inflammatory markers, it would increase your oxidative stress, increase your heart rate, and and increase your blood pressure. You would tell me that's bad. Guess what exercise does? It does all those things in the short term. But guess what happened in the long term? Those things improve because your short term response does not predict long term outcomes. I know this is really 
complicated, and some people, even physicians apparently, don't understand it. So maybe, Dr. Hyman, if I drew it in crayon for you, that acute does not mean the same thing as long term, maybe then you'd get it through your thick skull. Actually, you wouldn't because you've written a bunch of books about it and you make money off perpetuating that narrative. So you're pretty much pigeonholed into that corner. Although, if you ever changed your mind, I would be really impressed because that's what real scientists do. They change their mind when they get data. I've changed my mind on a bunch of stuff, including intermittent fasting causing loss of lean body mass, including fasted cardio, including branch chain amino acids, including a bunch of stuff. Because at the end of the day, I care more about getting the right answer than I do about being right. If you continue to defend a position in the face of overwhelming evidence, you're not a scientist, you're a politician. And what you're saying is your feelings are more important than data. Get it in the description. I'm out.